I love this time of year, right between Thanksgiving and Christmas, because one major holiday has come and gone, but I'm still looking forward to the next one. And this is the time of year where I just like to take it easy and decorate our place, catch up on work, and spend some low-key time at home. And that's why I wanted to make today my beef stew with buttered noodles. It's the perfect cold weather comfort food that you just want to snuggle up with on the couch while watching TV. And it's a nice break from all the poultry we've been eating lately. You can easily make this on the weekend when you have a little more time, but it doesn't require that much more effort. So, come on, let's go to the kitchen and I'll show you how to make this. I just chopped, actually finely diced, a small onion and minced three cloves of garlic. And this is all for my beef stew with buttered noodles. And what you're going to need for that is boneless short ribs, a bay leaf, vegetable oil, onion, garlic, flour, tomato paste, beef stock, red wine, potatoes, carrots, lemon, frozen peas, unsalted butter, egg noodles, and parsley. I'm just gonna coarsely chop up eight ounces of yellow potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold, and I wash them well, but I'm gonna keep the skins on, because with yellow potatoes, you can eat the skins. They're nice and thin. And I'm just gonna roughly chop them into about one inch, one and a half inch pieces because this is gonna be stewed in the stew for about an hour and you don't want it to completely disintegrate. And then I have two medium to large size carrots that are again washed and peeled and this is gonna be roughly one inch pieces as well. The fatter chunks I'm gonna slice them in half. Perfect. And that's it for your vegetables. We also have a third of a cup of frozen peas that I've thawed over by the stove, and that's we're gonna add that in later. I'm gonna need some parsley for the beef stew as well as the buttered noodles, so I'm just gonna do a good chunk right now and put it in a ramekin. When you chop parsley, it helps to make sure that the parsley is nice and dry. That way it won't stick to your knife and clump everywhere. You just need to have about three tablespoons total. So about two tablespoons for the stew and one tablespoon for the noodles. I'm gonna need lemon zest and lemon juice, so I might as well get that done with too. Just gonna need about a half. So the zest is gonna go in the noodles at the end and the juice is gonna go in the stew, just so it gives a little hint of freshness at the end. And now I have one pound of boneless short ribs. The reason I use this type of meat is because it does well when you stew it for a really long time. It just becomes tender, but there's a little bit too much fat, so I'm gonna trim that down so that the broth of the stew doesn't become too greasy. Cut that away. And let me tell you, boneless short ribs just has an intense flavor to it. It's so good in this stew. Okay, now I'm going to cut these down into about two inch pieces. You don't want the pieces to be too small because when it cooks for a long time, you don't want to shrink away to nothing. Okay, that's good. Make sure that your beef chunks are nice and dry, so pat it well with a paper towel. Now I'm just gonna season liberally with salt and pepper, just right on the plate. Get in there and massage. Okay, so that's pretty even. Now all my elements are done. I'm gonna wash my hands and go over to the stove and brown the beef. Mm -hmm. 
My pot is preheating nicely and I have one tablespoon of vegetable oil. And I'm hoping that you hear that sizzle. Try not to overcrowd your little pot or pan because you don't want it to steam. You do want it to brown nicely. And at this stage, you're not worried about cooking it all the way through. As long as it's a little bit brown on both sides, you're good. And you know, I have a long-standing relationship with beef stew. I was a latchkey kid growing up, and my sister and I would come home and crack open a can of Dinty Moore beef stew and eat it with rice. And then, when I went to culinary school, we learned how to make bouffe bourguignon. And I felt so fancy in French, but it was so familiar because of the beef stew out of these two. All right, both batches are nicely browned. And remember, they're not cooked yet, so it's okay if some of their pinky juices come out. That's why I'm putting it in a bowl purposely, because you do want to collect all those delicious juices and put them in the stew at the end. Now, you're gonna add your finely diced onion, a little salt so it sweats. Now you're gonna let this go for five minutes until they're tender. Nice and soft, so we're gonna add in our three cloves of minced garlic. Now we're gonna add in one tablespoon of tomato paste. Cook it out for a couple seconds. You need to thicken it up some more by adding some flour, one tablespoon. Cook this out as well so there's no raw flour taste. Add a quarter cup of dry red wine. You like this glass? Brought it all the way back from California. Do it slowly so you can pick up the souk or the brown bits. And lastly, two cups of beef broth. Whisk well and take your time so that you pick up all of that gorgeousness on the bottom. That's where all the flavor is. Okay, I'm getting impatient, so <laughs> pour the rest in. <laughs> Last touch, a bay leaf, a dry bay leaf. It gives slow cooked food that slow cooked taste. Now I'm gonna nestle my beef chunks back in and see that gorgeous beef juice? Add that in too. Season with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, now all I gotta do is bring this up to a simmer and cover it with a lid and then stick it in the oven for an hour and a half. The oven is preheated already to 300 degrees. That's right, nicely low and slow. You add in the vegetables later on and then go do something else. That's pretty much it. You just have to wait for it. The beef stew is almost done, so that's why we're gonna make our buttered noodles. And all I did was get eight ounces of wide egg noodles and cook them in salted boiling water. Just follow your package instructions. Then you drain them and put them back into the same pot you cooked them in. And now, I'm gonna turn the pot back on to maybe medium low. You just want a little bit of heat. And you're gonna add in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Then, do you remember that half of a lemon we zested before? Adds a little bit of sharp freshness. The thing about butter noodles is that it reminds me of my childhood because growing up we had a family friend babysitter named Ann Carpenter. She was a little older and so we used to refer to her as babysitter grandma. 
and whenever she watched us, she'd always make us buttered noodles. And it was shake and bake with buttered noodles. And that just kind of always reminds me of her. And I always think fondly of her. And so I guess this is why I'm making it with the beef stew. Because it's just two comforting things that remind me of my childhood. Now we're just going to garnish with one tablespoon of that chopped parsley. This adds a little color. Give it a taste and see where I am with the seasoning. It doesn't have to be overly seasoned because you're just going to ladle that juicy beef stew all over it. Just a little more. All you have to do is pull the beef stew out of the oven and skim the fat off the top with a spoon, just so it's not overly greasy. And then you just have to add in a third of a cup of frozen peas that are just thawed, and then it'll just warm right up. Sprinkle on some fresh parsley, and then serve it over these buttered noodles. And then go curl up on the couch. Yay! Are you excited? I am so excited. <laughs> Ooh, I love how the gravy from the beef stew just coats all the noodles. Oh, so good. The beef is spoon tender, not even fork. It just falls apart. Mmm. And it melts in your mouth. Everything goes really well together. Really juicy and soft. The butter noodles complement the stew because it's made with the acidic red wine and there's a little squirt of lemon at the end too. Mm -hmm. And the sweet carrots and peas, it's just perfect. For substitutions, if you don't want to use boneless short ribs, then you could just use chuck roast or even sometimes they sell meat that's called beef stew meat at the grocery store, labeled like that, already cut up in big chunks. So anything that is purposely supposed to be used for slow cooking, so it falls apart, use that. And instead of putting it over buttered noodles, you can put it over rice like I did in my childhood days, or you can just eat it alone and serve it with some crusty bread for dunking. Be sure to watch the behind the scenes video of the making of this episode, we'll link it for you. And if you enjoyed watching this, then remember to tell us by pushing like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you try it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mm. This is better than Dinty Moore, let me tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Comfort in a bowl. What do you want to watch? Let's see what's on. Ha, ha, ha.